In the last video, we started to look at the factor theorem and the remainder theorem. In this video, we're going to work through a range of different questions that involve the remainder theorem. Let's just go back and look at the remainder theorem. If we have some function of x, f of x, and we divide this by x minus a, using the factor theorem, we can say now, evaluating f of a will give us a remainder. If you're unsure what that means, please check out the last video as we went through this. All we're going to do is work through some examples and use this. So, in the first question, which is question number 14, we're asked to find the remainder when x cubed plus 2x squared minus 4x plus 2 is divided by x minus 1. Often students go through long division or equating coefficients using an identity. We don't need to do that. We simply need to evaluate f of 1. So if we let now f of x be equal to x cubed plus 2x squared minus 4x plus 2, all we're going to do is evaluate f of 1. So f of 1. Well, that's going to give me now 1 plus 2 lots of 1 minus 4 lots of 1 plus 2. So if we just add this up, we've got 1 plus 2, which is 3, minus 4, which is negative 1, plus 2, and that is going to give us 1. So we can say, now therefore, the remainder, so remainder is going to be 1. Remainder is 1. You, of course, don't have to write that out. I'm just showing what I'm doing. So I've simply gone ahead now and evaluated f of 1. So if we were asked to find the remainder when x cubed plus 2x squared minus 4x plus 2 was divided by x plus 3, we would evaluate f of negative 3, and that would give us the remainder. If we had 2x plus 5, all we would do here is the f of negative 5 over 2. In general, if we have now a linear function ax minus b, we would evaluate f of b over a. That would now yield a value here. If it was zero, we could say that now that was a factor of this particular function. So if we got zero here, we could have said that x minus 1 is a factor, and that's using the factor theorem as we saw in the last video. OK, let's look at another question. In question 15, it says when 4x cubed minus px squared plus 3 is divided by x plus 1, the remainder is 4. We're asked to find the value of p. So if we now let f of x, so let f of x be equal to 4x cubed minus px squared plus 3. P is just a constant. The variable in this particular equation is x. And we can see this from the bracket. So all I'm going to do now is f of negative 1. And that will be equal to 4. So this is my statement. We know that f of a is equal to r. So here a is negative 1. And the remainder is 4. So all I'm going to do from here is write that 4 will be equal to 4 lots of negative 1 cubed, which is negative 1, minus p lots of negative 1 squared, which is just 1, plus 3. So if we look at this, we've got 4 is equal to negative 4, and then we're going to have plus 3, which is going to be negative 1, and then we've got minus p. So from this, we can say that p will be equal to negative 5, and we found the value of p. I'm simply using the remainder theorem just here to state that f of negative 1 will be equal to 4. f of a is equal to r. Again, students may be tempted to use long division here, but we can see the coefficient of the term in x squared is defined now as p rather than having now a value such as 2. So it's an unknown. OK, let's have a look at another question. In question 16, it says f of x is equal to 2x cubed plus px squared plus x plus q. When f of x is divided by x plus 3, the remainder is negative 12. 
Given also x minus 1 is a factor of f of x, find the values of p and q. So again, this is a function of x where p and q are constants. p is the coefficient of a number in front of x squared, and q is just the constant. I'm going to write out two statements. When f of x is divided by x plus 3, the remainder is negative 12. So I'm going to say f of negative 3 is equal to negative 12. That is my first statement. Given also that x minus 1 is a factor of f of x, all I'm going to do right here is write that f of positive 1 will be equal to 0. This is using the factor theorem we saw in the last video. So f of negative 3 is equal to negative 12 and f of 1 is equal to 0. This will give us two different equations and it will allow us to solve simultaneously for p and q. So let's go ahead and start here. So negative 12 is equal to two lots now of negative uh, 3 cubed, which is negative 27. Then we're going to have plus p multiplied by negative 3 squared, which is going to give me 9, plus now the negative 3 minus 3 plus q. So this is going to become equation 1, and we can go ahead and tidy this up. So if I do that, what we're going to get here now is negative 12, then we're going to get here negative 54 plus 9p minus 3. So that's going to be negative 57. So if I add that to both sides, we're going to have 45 is equal to 9p plus q. And I'm going to call this equation 1. So that's equation 1. If we just go ahead and move this across slightly, let's put that just there. And if we put this one just here, we can now go ahead and look at f of 1. So if I do f of 1, what we're going to have is 0. So I can say that 0 is going to be equal to 2 lots of 1 plus p lots of 1 plus 1 plus q. So what have we got here? We've got 3 plus p plus q is equal to 0. So we've got negative 3 is equal to p plus q. And I'm going to call this one equation 2. So let's go ahead now and look at our simultaneous equations. I'm going to just write one above the other. So this is equation 1. 45 is equal to 9p plus q. That's equation 1. And negative 3 will be equal to 1p plus 1q. Equation 1, equation 2. If we go ahead and do 1 minus 2, that will eliminate the q's. So 1 minus 2. So 45 subtract negative 3 is 48. 9p subtract p is going to be 8p, and the q's will cancel. From here, we can see that 48 divided by 8 is 6, so p is going to be 6. If I substitute in p is equal to 6 into equation 2, we can see from that now 6 from negative 3, we can say now that q is going to be negative 9. And that's just using simple linear simultaneous equations. So let's just check that works in this one just here. Well, we're going to have 54 if we sub in 6 for p, and then plus q, which is negative 9, that does make 45. So all I've done is use the remainder theorem and the factor theorem to solve simultaneously. OK, let's look at another one. In question 17, it says, given when 4x squared minus ax plus 3 is divided by x plus 1, the remainder is the same as when it's divided by x minus 2. We're asked, to, uh, sorry, we're asked here to find the value of the constant a. So given now that when it's divided by x plus 1 and x minus 2, we get the same value. So what I can simply say here now is that the f of negative 1 will be equal to f of 2. So I'll take my f of x to be this um, expression just here, and we'll sub that in. So what we can say then is 4 lots of negative 1 squared, which is going to give me 1, minus a lots of the negative 1, plus 3, will be equal to 4 lots, and I'm just simply substituting in the 2, 4 lots of 2 squared, which is going to give me 4, 
minus a lot of 2 plus 3. So on here we've got 4 plus a, the threes are going to cancel, will be equal to 16 minus 2a. That's going to be giving me, adding the 2a to both sides, 3a and subtracting the 4. 3a is equal to 12 and a is equal to 4. So we've gone ahead and used the remainder theorem, set those equal and solved. Depending on your teacher or which exam board you're doing, they may want you to state now f of x is this expression right here. I've simply said that the remainders will be equal, so f of negative 1 will be equal to f of 2. We've gone ahead and solved. If you want to check that works, plug it back in and you will see that it will do. So there are some examples of the remainder theorem. Remember, if you're simply asked to find the remainder when some polynomial is divided by a linear factor, use the remainder theorem. If you're asked for quotient and remainder, you can go ahead and use either algebraic long division or the equating coefficients from the identity. This is a simple way now of evaluating the remainder by substituting in the value of A.